Hi, my name is Al at Sailing Company here, and today we're going to take a look at the Windfreak Technologies Synth NV RF generator. Uh, this is a small module that is controlled or operated by or through USB, and it can be used with a Windows computer, one that runs Linux, or one that's or an Android-based system. Now what this is, is it a tu it's a tunable RF generator and its frequency range is 34 megahertz to 4.4 gigahertz. And it also contains a 10 megahertz generator output that you can see on the spectrum analyzer here. And it also has an RF power meter input there. It can also be run on a, a voltage of about seven volts DC from this extra connector right there. So if it, if it can be programmed the way you want it to be, you can disconnect it from USB, power it through that port, and it'll start up in the last set of settings that you left it in. Okay, well, now that you've got the uh, application all installed, uh, when you open the thing up, this is what you get. Uh, the main screen here, which defaults to a great big huge frequency. Now we said, we mentioned earlier that this was tunable, possibly, and there's two ways to set that. You can either use a scroll wheel like this and move the thing around, or you can use the touch pad right here. And I um, was trying to put in an ISM band right here, and you can put that in, enter from keypad like that. The other controls you've got are uh, the power control over here, we have a low range and a high range and the RF on and off button right there. And then you've got a slider control. And this, um, this slider control is, uh, represents the amount of attenuation that you would have um, based on a, an approximately a plus 19 dBm level. So this is not absolute, but it brings it down from that level that it's running at. Okay. Um, another thing that I should mention is um, if, the, uh, if you've been able to connect the unit to the computer through USB, you'll get this nice little green symbol up here in between these two buttons. So there's a number of tabs along the top for all the different types of features. I, the next one here is the power detector, and we're actually running this right now, so if I go to high power here and then zip it up and we should be, well, let's see, first dummy, turn the RF on, you see, it's co cockpit problems. Anyway, I've got this connected to a little network and so we're watching that go up and down right now. Anyway, that's that's pretty much all there is to the power level meter, but that's uh, that this little feature comes in handy um, in another thing we'll see in a minute. The next part is the sweep generator. I mentioned this thing was tunable and you saw that happening, but you can do sweep settings here with the usual stuff is uh, start frequency, stop frequency, uh, the amount of time per step, and the step size. And when you get all these, these two numbers in here, it'll calculate the number of points down here that you're going to end up with. Um, you can sweep once or sweep continuously, and another little feature is if you hover over certain buttons, you get a little bit of a a prompt that comes up that tells you what it is so it's kind of like you know giving you some information about what each one of these things does let's see if I can get this one to work over here yep there it goes okay then uh, another thing it's got is uh, it's got a couple of modulation features one is amplitude modulation and you've got the usual settings you'd expect from there and then uh, again, similar settings for pulse amplitude modulation here, like that. So um, the other buttons are more or less, I think of them as utility buttons. Here's something where you can read from the device and it'll tell you all the different settings that have been loaded into the thing. Over here, the next button are extras. And uh, if you want to actually set this thing up so that you can run it without a PC, then you need to, to download, or actually download the settings using these controls here, like that. Here's, here's an example of the thing loading its version, so you can, you can read it, see what you've got right there. 
Similar things, here's some information that comes in from various A to Ds that are in the thing. Uh, there's, another, there's another thing here for the regist register control. It says use at your own risk. So um, if you need to make any changes to anything inside because you've changed something like, for instance, if you're not using a 10 megahertz RF source or you want to use a higher precision source and you don't want to use the reference that's there, that reference output is also an input and you would make changes to how the unit operates using this screen, but you're on your own with that anyway. So that pretty much tells us uh, or introduces everything that we have here. The last thing I'm going to mention is if I go back to the sweep tab, there's also the net network analyzer um, feature right here. And in a, in a few minutes, we're going to go into a calibration and, and look at the results of my 90 megahertz bandpass filter. Okay, after you've got the short jumper cable installed, the next thing that you'll see on the on the graph is sort of a horizontal line. What you want to do is have the thing running, have a sort of a low RF power level here, and then click the button Take Cal Data. If your span is really short, the LED will, or the LED indicator here will stay on for a very short time like this. If you have a wide span, it may take several seconds for that to go off. Then the next thing that you want to do is, is run or put your cal on here and you see how the line went to 0 dB. That's where it's supposed to be. This is actually running and it's all calibrated right now and it's set for now. You can put in your circuit under test um, in place of the jumper wire. And after we've run the calibration on the network analyzer, this is the result of my horrible little 90 megahertz bandpass filter.